very important study today. I'm going to talk to you and prove to you that God has not cast away the Jews, the Jewish people. Um, he hasn't. And there's an awful lot of disinformation out there going around about me and what I've taught and what I understand and whatever I believe and whatever else. Uh, because there's a lot of very ignorant people that are coming along posting comments on my videos and they're coming up with all kinds of wild theories. You know, they think I'm not even dispensational, which is really weird. Um, I've preached dispensationalism for many years, a lot longer than a lot of the other King James only type people online. Um, but uh, turn your Bible to your King James Bible to Romans chapter 11. Um, been doing some videos on this thing of this false prophet Gene Kim, which came out and he said, God cast away the Jewish people. He cast them away. And um, just a flat out denial of scripture. Um, and just to kind of reiterate this whole thing of why bring up false prophets, Brian? Why don't you just preach the gospel and everything else? Um, a lot of the New Testament, most of the New Testament is not gospel. There's only a few verses here and there throughout the New Testament. If you take the totality of everything it's written, from Paul, we'll just say Paul, the Apostle Paul, he didn't write that much about the gospel. There's a lot of things, doctrinal things, things that will, the way we should live, the way things, stands we should take and whatever else. It wasn't just all gospel. So this, uh, this high pressure sales, winning souls uh, movement, it's of the devil, it, quite frankly, because when they say we're soul winning, first of all, that term isn't even a New Testament term. He that winneth souls is wise. It has nothing to do with preaching the gospel. It's talking about a winning personality, being out friendly and outgoing and whatever else. That's what it's talking about. King Solomon did not have the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, resurrection. He didn't have that to preach to anybody. So this winning souls thing was created in the 20th century, primarily, to get large numbers of people into the church buildings so that you can build bigger church buildings so you can get more people so you can build big, bigger buildings. It's crazy. It's a business model. So if you come out and you say some doctrinal things or you expose false prophets, false professing Christians will come and say, why aren't you winning souls? You should be preaching the gospel. Every single message should be the gospel. Uh, no. There are a lot of messages that I have that are solely dedicated to preaching the gospel and there are other messages I do where I mention the gospel or talk about the gospel but it's doctrinally about something else and there's a very important thing here what is the condition of a Jew today in God's sight obviously they're God's chosen people but how do things work out let me just sum it up for you in a very quick concise manner what the New Testament is actually teaching the Old Testament, obviously God deals with Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, and his 12 sons and their descendants. Um, the physical seed there, in other words. And God is there, and, they, and you know the story of the Old Testament if you've ever read it, if you've ever heard a lot of preaching on it. The Jews were, they'd have a good king, then they'd have a bad king. And, you know, at first they didn't have kings, and then they wanted a king, so, you know, they got Saul, and then they got David after that. David was a good king, Saul was not. And it just goes down through, and good king, bad king, good king, bad king. They're going in there worshiping other gods and whatever else. And finally, God allowed the nation of Israel to be defeated. And then they came and they rebuilt some things, and then they got defeated again. Uh, the first time the Babylonians, second time, you know, would have been, uh, if, you know, when Jesus was on the earth, I'll say it this way, it was the Romans that they were under uh, the control of. Israel in Jesus' day was not a nation with their own laws and their own people and running things and whatever else. Um, it was pagans like Herod and, and of course, the Romans and whatever else. Um, the Pontius Pilate and Caesar, ultimately. But you had different, you know, people there that were non-Jews running the nation of Israel. It was a conquered nation, in other words, when Jesus was on the earth. So he comes down and he offers the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Right? And, and if you look at the difference between the two, kingdom of God can mean kingdom of heaven, but kingdom of heaven never means kingdom of God. Okay, understand that. Kingdom of heaven, every single time it appears in the book of Matthew, it's always a reference to the physical, visible kingdom on earth. That Jesus Christ will one day rule um, from this earth, on this earth, uh, in Jerusalem. The kingdom of God can mean that, or it can also mean a spiritual kingdom. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. But Jesus comes and he offers the kingdom. They reject Jesus as their king, nationally. 
but not individually. That's a very important thing there. Nationally, Israel rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, but individually there were a lot of Jews that didn't. All right? Um, get back to that here in just a minute. Jesus dies on the cross, buried, rises again the third day. The Jews caused him to be put to death, but it was the Romans that did it. The Jews weren't the ones pounding the nails in and scourging him and whatever else and crucifying him. That was a Roman crucifixion. Always remember that. When the Jews and the Romans work together, you have problems. Remember that. The covenant that's confirmed, by the way, by the Antichrist in Daniel chapter 9, it's the Romans and the Jews working together. It's not the Jews and the Muslims. That's a lie. Although, you know, Islam basically comes from Roman Catholicism, but that's another story. Um, but Jesus dies, he's buried, he rises again the third day, comes up, and then the gospel is again presented to the Jews as a nation. Lots of Jews get saved. All the early Christians were Jews. And then they started to go to the Gentiles and started to spread out to the Gentiles. And there was some division created among the Jews because of that. Why are we taking the things of God and giving them to these Gentiles? And you even see it even after they're saved, you know, there's dissimulation there. Peter falls away with the dissimulation. Paul comes and rebukes him to his face in the book of Galatians because he's going back. Going back and he's ashamed to be around the Gentiles. So there were a lot of Jewish Christians early on. And the nation of Israel, it's being the gospel is being presented with signs and wonders to confirm the word to those Jewish people. Why? Because the Jews require a sign. You look at the book of Exodus, sign after sign after sign. So, again, I could be saying a whole lot more on this. Just to do the, the real study of the whole thing, how it works out, it would be huge. Take many, many hours to do, but trying to keep this short and to the point. Well, the nation of Israel, because of their corrupt leadership, mostly because of their corrupt leadership, they reject Jesus again, even after he showed the miracle of dying, being buried, and rising again the third day according to the scriptures. They see that. They see the signs, the speaking in tongues, the miraculous healing gifts, um, prophecy, and all the other things that were there, uh, confirming the word to the Jews. They still say, no, we reject it because we're afraid of you know losing our political connections through our churches and whatever else, and that's the same thing of today. People were very afraid of that. And uh, so they rejected Jesus Christ again. You see that as the book of Acts transitions on through. The nation of Israel, as a nation, uh, rejected Jesus Christ. So the salvation starts to go to the Gentile people. But it's only in part in terms of the nation of Israel being, you know, okay, we're going to turn from you. There's still Jews that get saved all throughout the New Testament. And there are still Jews that have gotten saved in the first century, and the second century, and the third century, and the fourth century, and that all up to today. There are Jews that are saved right now, and they can trace their lineage the whole way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're physical Jews. It's a remnant, it's a small number, but there are Jews that are still getting saved right now. That's why you can't say that God cast away the Jewish people. That's not true. That is not true. God has the nation of Israel. There's a spirit of slumber there because they rejected him. They're being punished at this point in time, and there's no automatic salvation because they're God's chosen people and whatever else. There was no automatic salvation in the Old Testament. So again, people have accused me of that. Oh, you, so you think the Jews are saved without believing in Jesus? Why would I ever say that? I never taught that. People have a problem with lying that follow Gene, Bra Gene, Gene Breaker and Robert Kim. <laughs> yeah that follow Robert Breaker and Gene Kim. I've been dealing with their viewers. Just the same thing as Stephen Anderson's viewers. The cult followers of Stephen Anderson, they'd lie about me as well. These people have a, have a real problem with lying and misrepresenting my position. I've never taught that a Jew is automatically saved and they don't need Jesus Christ. Never taught that. It's kind of weird. But uh, the Jews today, as a people, as a nation, the nation of Israel, has been brought back to their land in unbelief, exactly as the Bible prophesied would happen. And what they're waiting for is the catching up of the body of Christ when we leave, then God starts to turn and starts to deal with the nation of Israel as a nation again. But there's going to be Jews that go up when the catching up happens. Saved Jewish people. They're going to be there. They're going up. But God, when he starts to deal with the nation of Israel again, that's why there's the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Who's it for? 
for the body of Christ, we need to be purified and refined and we need to have Jesus revealed to us. <laughs> uh, no, the church does not have to need to have Jesus revealed to it. We already understand about Jesus Christ. I know him personally. So do you if you're saved. I don't need to have Jesus revealed to me. Well, tell me about this Jesus guy. I'd like to see some signs and wonders. Huh? And you look at the whole thing of uh, my study that I did, the coming Exodus. You know, you have the two witnesses there that show up in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, Moses and Elijah. Again, you can do the study on that. That's who it is. It's not Enoch and Elijah. That's nonsense. Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses. And think about what that's going to happen or do to the Jews. You say, hey, uh, Gentile, I'm a Gentile. Um, Moses and Elijah are over in Jerusalem. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Praise the Lord. Whatever. You know, if I'm a lost guy, I would, you know, oh, okay. Oh, those guys from the Bible? Oh, that's weird. But what about a Jew? Moses and Elijah? The law and the prophets? <gasps> Moses representing the law and Elijah the prophets? What? You know? And they're performing signs and wonders? Yeah, that's why that time period that's coming is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Israel. It's for Israel. All right? So, um, this needed to clarify that. And then, of course, you go into the millennial, you have the judgment of the nations that happens in Matthew chapter 25. And the Lord basically separates the sheep and the goats. And the saved Jews go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Or the, uh, yeah, the millennial kingdom. They came out of the time of Jacob's trouble. They endured to the end. And they're saved, and now they go into the millennial kingdom that was promised for them, into the promised land, the whole thing. Yes, I do understand, and there's a lot more I could say. I'm just trying to keep it short. So, you know, I get these condescending people in the comments, you obviously don't understand, you know. But I understand it very well, okay? But even if I didn't understand the whole thing, some little lying false prophet comes out and says, God cast away the Jews. I can look and say, wait a second, Romans chapter 11 Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Um, this said not cast away. You said cast away. I wonder who's right. I think I'll go with the Bible. Kind of like the thing of Robert Breaker and he comes along and he says, Call upon the name of the Lord. That, that doesn't. That's not for you and it, it doesn't mean that you have to call. It's believing. Okay? But it says Call. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, talking about calling upon the name of the Lord being saved, you know. Uh, it says call. Uh, yeah, but call doesn't mean call. Um, okay, if I saw a little child out on the street someplace, and I walked over to the child and I said, excuse me, could you please call for your father? What are they going to do? So what are you doing? Oh, I'm believing in my father. No, they're going to say, Daddy! They'll call for their father. You know why? Because even a child can understand that call means call. You have to be a rather wicked Satanist to come out and say, you know the word call? It no longer means call. You know, male and female, they no longer mean male and female. Maybe you're binary. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, scientifically, I can prove that you're a woman, but uh, no, I refuse to accept that. I'm going to call myself a an it or something. I reject the, the use of pronouns. If the Bible says something plainly, then you go with what the Bible teaches. Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. God hath not cast away his people. Not cast away. Well, see, the Bible plainly teaches that the, it says cast away. Um, then you're a liar. You're saying, yea, hath God said. No man with the Holy Spirit in him is going to change the plain teaching of this. And if you ever see me changing the text here, I'm not saying, well, I don't agree with how you, you interpret it. You're a lordship salvationist. You're a teach sinless perfection and whatever. They, which is ridiculous. Again, that's what some of the lies said about me. I don't teach either one. But uh, Brian Denlinger, you teach this and that. If you ever see me picking up the Bible and saying, um, Romans chapter 10, verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. What it's saying there is there is a difference between the Jew and the Greek. If I would ever say that, 
while you're while pointing to this verse, you say, wait, it, uh, Brian, it says no difference. And of course, it's talking spiritually there. God's no respecter of persons. Obviously, there's a difference differences in culture between Jews and Greeks. Get that. But what I'm saying here is, if you're looking at the page of Scripture, and I'm telling you not to believe what you're reading with your eyes and your common sense, then you mark me down as a false prophet and you run away from me. Get away from me. Do my enemies ever talk like this? I don't think so. So, oh, you can trust me, and they'll, they'll speak about themselves in the third person, too, which is really weird. You know, a lot of people say, Brother Breaker, Rubber Breaker, I'm, I'm Rubber Breaker, you know. You know what I mean, if you're familiar with things. Watch out for false prophets. They will come and they will do, yea, hath God said. Call really doesn't mean call. Um, cast away is the right way to look at it, even though it says not cast away. So let's go through Romans chapter 11. I'm going to show you something very interesting here in today's study. Romans chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So what does Paul do? He says three different things there. He's an Israelite. Is everybody that's in Israel right now, are they all Jews? No. They're not all of Israel that are of Israel, the Bible talks about, here in the same book. They're not all Jewish over there. There's a lot of people over there, I'm a Jew or something, you know, and they, they got blonde hair and blue eyes or something. And they, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, the Jews are a Middle Eastern people. They're a Shemitic people. All right. Um, I can look at the people over there in Israel and I can see, yeah, that one looks like a Jew, that one does not. And, you know, you have to watch out for this other satanic heresy. None of the people over there are Jews. Okay, then you're just rejecting all what the Bible teaches about the end times and the Jews coming there. That stuff's nutty, nutty nonsense, too. Um, but then, you know, well, because Brian says that there are Jews over there, then he, he means that everybody that's over there in Israel, they're all Jews. I didn't say that. The Jews came back to their land, but there are people there that are calling themselves Jews, and they're not real Jews. They would say, I'm an Israelite, just like I say I'm an American. Okay, and, and let me just make a point here, too, on this thing of uh, the Jews and whatever else, uh, that they've been completely cast away as a people. Um, is America a wicked nation? You say, well, yes, it's very bad. Then that means every American's wicked. No. Just because America is a wicked nation and God is rejecting America as a nation, that doesn't mean he doesn't care about every cer you know, certain Americans that are in the nation of America. Same thing with the Jews. The nation of Israel is very wicked, but there are Jews that are saved and they can trace their lineage back. They're not just Israelites. Look at this. I also am an Israelite. That's a geographic location of the seed of Abraham, a oh, physical descendant. And he knows which tribe he's part of, of the tribe of Benjamin. I remember years ago, Stephen Anderson came out and he said, uh, he said, there are no, he said, there's not one mention, not one mention, little effeminate voice that he had. There's not one mention of any physical Jews in the New Testament. It's always spiritual. Thank you, replacement theology heretic. It's all spiritual Jews. There are no physical Jews. And I did a video refuting him and I said, what about that? Paul makes it very clear. He's a physical descendant of Abraham. Tells you what tribe he's a part of. Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Let me just stop right there. If you're Jewish out there, and you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of, whatever your tribe is. Um, make sure that you're rejecting the Catholic Church and not the New Testament. The New Testament's not your enemy. The New Testament's very supportive of the Jewish people. And what a lot of Jews reject is they actually reject Catholicism and they say, well, this book came from Catholicism. Uh, that's interesting. Then why would uh, the Catholic Church forbid their people to read the King James Bible? Hmm. And I've talked to Catholics in person, by the way, former Catholics, and they said, yeah, I was told as a child, you do not read the King James Bible. You don't touch it. You don't even look at it. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, against the nation, in other words, 
Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Very similar to modern America. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. You know what? God has reserved a bunch of godly people here in this country. America is going to fall. Sure word of prophecy, I promise you. There's no America in Bible prophecy. That's proof, really all the proof you need. But just look at the plain science and logic of the economy and we don't produce anything anymore. We're, you know, 70% of gross domestic product is consumer debt. That's good. You know, we'll just get other people to make stuff for us and that'll never, you know, get us in the end or anything. Uh, most people don't produce their own food. Most people are completely dependent on, you know, the power grid and, and everything else. And, but we're a strong nation. No, we're not. Um, then why hasn't God destroyed this country? Well, because God has some uh, reservations shall we say. God has reserved to himself a lot of godly men and women that will not bow the knee to the image of Baal. Plain and simple. Verse 5, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it is then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. <laughs> a very interesting way of basically saying, God isn't saying I'm preserving a bunch of people and they're just perfect and whatever else because of their works are so amazing. No, God has grace. God has grace for this nation. God hasn't destroyed things yet. God still has the lights on and food in our stomachs and clothing on our backs. He's given us a lot of things because of his grace. God could just simply say, hey, you know what? Israel was so wicked, wipe the whole thing out. Just kill them all. I'll start over or whatever else. He you know, talked about that to Moses at one point in time. Let me alone. I'll, you know, I'll just kill them all and I'll start over with you. And Moses, no, no, don't do that. God could do the same thing today with America. But he has grace. Verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. All right. Um, what's it talking about there? Israel is looking and they're saying, where is our king? Where is our king? And here's a homeless carpenter walking by and, they say, and he says, I'm the king. And they say, that guy? Are you kidding me? That guy's a carpenter. I remember years ago, he redid part of our place over there and I saw him working on things. You know, he's, yeah, he's a decent carpenter and whatever, but him the king? Yeah, no, uh-uh. Okay. Israel hath not obtained that what they're seeking for that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. There are saved Jews that are now part of that elect body of Christ because of their God saving them. And now they're saying, we have obtained it. To a Jew that's born again, that's accepted Jesus as their Messiah, there you go. You have it. You have the promises. You're going to go you know, be resurrected. You'll be in heaven with the Lord. You'll get to come back with him, to rule and reign with him on the earth for a thousand years the kingdom, the land that was promised to your fathers, you have it. And the rest were blinded. But the interesting thing is, did God ever restore the you know, sight to somebody that was born blind? Yeah, he did. Sorry, I have something in my mouth there. He did. Can God take a Jew today that's blinded through all their traditions and all their other stuff, but they start to look for truth? Can God take that Jew today and say, I'll save you. Hey, are you ready to accept me as your Messiah? Ben, or whatever you want to make the name into, a Jewish man's name, Mordecai. Hey, Mordecai, do you want to get saved today? Well, this is really going to get me in trouble with my family. I mean, I had, I had a Jew the one time sending donations to this ministry. They were saved. And they said, I cannot tell you my name. I cannot give any return address. Please don't mention this. Whatever this was years ago. I've, they haven't been writing for a while, but long time ago. And they said, I'm scared to death. My family will find out. If a Jew's family finds out that they got saved, they'll have a funeral for them. And officially said, they're dead to me. They're a Christian. They're dead. Get them away. I no longer have a son. They will. It costs the Jew something very great to be 
become a Christian, to be part of the body of Christ. It's a very big thing right now. They obtain what they're looking for, but the rest of their family is blinded. I've known a number of saved Jews over the years. Some false little satanic teacher comes out and he says, God cast him away and he's just dealing with the Gentiles now. There are no, no Jews in the church right now. I don't know how anybody could continue to watch a guy like that. Uh, verse 8, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. Okay? And let me just say this. I actually talked to a Jew the one time, and he said that the New Testament's against me, and he was giving all the stuff, you know, and, and I said, well... You know, you can get saved. I mean, he's there. He's your Messiah, you know, and whatever. And he said, yeah, but he said, your New Testament says that I was blinded. And I said, yeah, in part. <laughs> Blindness has happened to Israel in part. You can be one of the ones that's not blinded. And he said, well, I just can't see it. I just don't understand it and whatever else. And I said, well, what are you waiting for? He said, well, according to your New Testament, he said, there's going to come this time that's coming in the book of Revelation. And he said, that's when the we'll be able to see as a nation again. And he said, I'm just going to wait for that. And I said, do you realize what you're waiting for? Do you realize how bad that could be? You might not make it through. You might be one of the ones that gets killed. You might have your head cut off. And he said, yeah. But he said, at least I'll see it then. Okay. I'm not going to get the guy in a headlock and say, hey, you have to get saved. I won't let you get out of here until you pray the prayer or something. No, I'm not going to say that. You don't want to get saved right now? You believe you have the spirit of blindness? Well, you do. Okay. If you make it to the time of Jacob's trouble, maybe you'll have a chance. I don't know. Bad thing to chance to take, though. Verse 11. I say then, hath they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Stumbled that they should fall. Not, you know, not only is it just that they're not cast away, it's also they haven't even stumbled in terms of that they're falling and they're, and they're done and they're finished. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to, for to provoke them to jealousy. You know, if you're a Jew, you should be jealous of a Christian, of the blessings and things. What do you do about your sin? I've seen some of these rabbis' videos. I'll watch them occasionally, and, you know, and they, they don't like to talk about sin. How do you get rid of your sins? There's no temple there to go to, to do your animal sacrifices. Did that system go away? Okay, what's it been replaced with? Think about that. Good works? What are you, Catholic or something? <laughs> How do you make an atonement for your sin? Well, hopefully I'll have a son and he can pray me out of, you know, the pray for me and things like that so when the resurrection happens, I, you know, point me towards Jerusalem and hopefully I'll get over there. Not much hope there. Especially nowadays with the way children are. Verse uh, 12. If, you're, if you get saved, by the way, then you have some really good hope and peace and everything else too. Let me say it that way. Hope you get jealous about that. God's dealing with me as a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. And Lord's blessing me and doing all kinds of great things through this ministry. So, thank you, Lord. If you're a lost Jew, he's not messing with you right now. Your time's not yet. Verse 12, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? How much better is it going to be in the Millennial Kingdom when the New Covenant comes in? You say, well, no, Brian, the New Covenant came in, that's the New Testament. Uh, you can watch my study on that. The New Testament and the New Covenant are two different things. And anybody that comes along and says that the New Covenant is the New Testament, they're lying to you. And ironically, a lot of the Vatican versions... These new versions, they'll change New Testament to New Covenant. That's very dangerous. Very, very wicked. Verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Paul, of course, writing here. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. Well, now, if the Jews have been cast away, and there are no Jews in the New Testament church... Why on earth would Paul say, I'd like to provoke 
to emulation, them which are my flesh, makes a distinction there, and might save some of them. Why? Blindness in part has happened to Israel. A remnant shall be saved. A small little number of Jews gets saved in this time period. You can't say that God cast them away. That's nonsense. But now let's look at verse 15. Oh. For if, conditional clause, the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Oh, no. Do you realize we just found a contradiction in our King James Bible? God hath not cast away, if the casting away of them. Oh, no. It's a contradiction. No, actually, it's not. Sorry, there are no contradictions in the King James Bible. That's God's perfect word. What's it saying here? Notice the little thing at the very end of the verse, at the end of verse 15 there. That's called a question mark. All right. It is proposing, it's, it's a, giving a question, a hypothetical type of a thing here. And how do you know? Because it starts out if, for if. All right. Look at this. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? If the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. All right. Think about this for a minute. Has God completely cast away the Jewish people? No. But what if he had? Would that have meant the reconciling of the whole world? If God said, I'm done completely with the Jews, boom, cast them off. If the casting off of them, would that have meant the reconciling of the world? No, it wouldn't have. Why? Because men still have free will. God doesn't say, I'm, I'm going to just cast away the Jews and then all the Gentiles will get saved. That's not what's going on. That's what the verse is saying. It's not saying that God, oh yes, God actually did cast them off. No, it's not. It's a conditional clause. It's a question. It's a hypothetical type of a thing. If God had cast off the Jews, it still wouldn't have meant the reconciling of the world. Is basically what the verse is saying. Would that be the reconciling of the world? No, it's not. See? That's what's going on there. What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? They're not cast off. They're blind. Spiritually, they're dead. But there's some that can still get saved. God rose, or, uh, God healed blind people, and he had people rise up from the dead. Numerous people under the Lord's ministry, the most popular, of course, being Lazarus. Lord raises him from the dead. Now, he can heal the blind, and he can raise the dead, but he can't save a Jew today. That's why I get ticked off about this Gene Kim guy and anybody else like him. All right? Oh, well, you know, it's, they're cast away. They're, they're done. They're finished. God, they cast them away. They have to go through the, you know, the great tribulation. There's no great tribulation in terms of a title. It's a description. There shall be great tribulation. It doesn't say the great tribulation. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, you think his little PhD would have something, done something better for him that he could learn the Bible a little bit better. And, of course, you see his little idiot followers that come to my channel and they're posting their comments, and I can tell they don't understand the Bible. They're not being taught. Verse 16, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Right? Let me just stop right there. I am born in. I'm born again. I am now a citizen of Israel spiritually. Physically, I'm still a barbarian, according to the New Testament. Oh, well, before the New Testament was written, don't you know that Romans were called barbarian? I'm not talking about before or after or what does this verse. I'm talking about the text of Scripture. The people of ancient Germania, Britannia, my ancestral lands, you know, northern Europe. They were called barbarians. 
born again barbarian. It's that simple. I'm not supposed to give up my culture or my ethnicity or anything else. You see it in the book of Revelation. God has to redeem us to, you know, we've been redeemed to the, the land by the blood, you know, and, and things there. Revelation chapter 5, I'm not turning to it right now. Out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Oh, we have to give up our ethnicity. No, you don't. Anybody that tells you that, shut them off. They're an ignorant liar. Okay. Um, spiritually, I'm the same as a Jew. I'm born in by spirit of adoption. Okay. That's there. But physically, there's still a difference. If I was a physical Jew and I was saved, I probably would abstain from pork. Why? Because geographically, it's not really for my people. And historically, it's not for my people. So my body is not accustomed to having pork. I am of German descent and also some British descent. So pork is completely fine from my ancestral lands. It's more than just... I identify as such and such. I'm a German American or something like that. No, there's certain traits and certain gifts that God gives to different ethnicities of people. And it's wonderful and it's beautiful. There's some really amazing cuisines and things that the Egyptian people have and people in Africa and things like that and, and the beautiful clothes that they wear and a lot of the cultural things, as long as they're, you know, in line with scripture, they're not, you know, cannibalism or something weird like that. Every culture has its beauty. God created that. God wants to preserve that. That's why there's no distinctions about, you know, celebration of holidays. You do what you want. Keep your culture. That's what God wants. Spiritually, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. There's not going to be a segregation thing up in heaven or something like that. All the... You know, don't go down to that part of heaven over there. Why? Well, that's the black section. <laughs> no. Black's been, you know, red and yellow, black and white. We're all going to be together in heaven. Praise Lord. Can't wait for that. Looking forward to it. You know? Except, that's the thing that confuses me. All these years, I just think there's so many things that are just so simple to understand. And you just, it's not even that difficult. And people just make it into this huge thing and they separate and divide over it. And I think... What are you people doing? It's not supposed to be that hard. Uh, let's continue. As a Gentile, I'm not supposed to boast against the nation of Israel, which a lot of people do. Verse nine or 19, excuse me. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. They're broken off because of unbelief. They don't believe that Jesus is their Messiah. But that doesn't mean that they can't believe. Verse 21. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. All right. Now, here we have a, a situation, which I will talk about as we continue, where God, if you look at the Old Testament, and you see what God did to the nation of Israel, um, it's going to come to America. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. What does it say there, the first word? Behold. If you're beholding something, you can see it, you can understand it. You know, I can't say, behold, the Lord, he's right here, standing beside me. I can't say that, you can't see him. Behold, how can you behold the goodness and severity of God? Um, I don't know, the things that are written for time are written for our learning. Old Testament. What did God do to a nation that uh, once served him and then went evil and started to worship other gods and everything else? What did God do to it? He destroyed it. God bless America. No, I don't think so. What's going to happen? Well, this country is going to go the way of ancient Israel. Two godliest nations that ever existed. Israel and America. I'd say England was pretty good for a long time as well. Um, but uh, that hasn't happened, or that, that uh, has stopped now. Let me say it that way. Verse 23. 
And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Who's it talking about? It's talking about the Jews. If they abide not still in unbelief, the Jew finally says, I don't want to live over here. I don't want to abide in unbelief. I want to come and accept Jesus as my, as my Messiah, as my Savior. Okay, God will graft them in again. No, he won't because the Jews are cast off. No, they're not cast off. Well, the Jews over in Israel, they're not real Jews. Uh, yes, they are. Some of them. There are some that aren't. There are some that are. God is fulfilling prophecy. Well, they're over there in unbelief. Yes, exactly as they're supposed to be over there in unbelief, but they can get saved. You go over there, you don't say, I'm not witnessing for Jesus Christ at all, even if the Lord gives me an opportunity. Some Jew comes over and he says, oh, is that a New Testament? Shut up, I'm not talking to you. You're cast away. No. Sure, let me tell you about this book here. Let me tell you about the Bible. If I get to meet Jews, I start praying like crazy. Lord, give me an opportunity to witness to them. Give me an opportunity. I met a Jew the one time I was actually selling a pellet stove, I think it was, at the time, and uh, came up from southern Maine and uh, got to talking to him and found out he was already saved. So had an opportunity there to witness to him and get him saved and whatever, and Jesus is his Messiah, you know. No, he's already his Messiah. Ah, nuts. <laughs> little sarcasm there, but uh, it was great. I love to meet saved Jews. Wonderful thing. Verse 24, For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? There are no Jews in the New Testament? Are you kidding? They belong in this whole thing of the New Testament. It's natural for them to get saved. It's natural for them to believe in their Messiah. You know, for me, I'm a Gentile. My ancestors back in the first century were, you know, running around getting to kill, you know, Roman soldiers and everything, which would have been kind of good, but, you know, back then. But, you know, my ancient uh, heathen ancestors, we, we weren't, uh, didn't have anything to understand about Moses and the Ten Commandments and whatever else. But a Jew... It's more natural for them to get saved. Verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Blindness in part is there. But it doesn't mean the whole thing, that the whole nation's just been cast away and all the people have been cast away and everything else. And if you believe that, you are quite foolish. Any Jew can get saved. If they don't, they go to hell just like any lost Gentile. Verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant, the new covenant, unto them when I shall take away their sins, brought in at the, time, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why the Lord comes and he says, Okay, it's interesting because way back when with uh, um, Samuel, they come along and they say, give us a king, give us a king. And the Lord says, they haven't rejected you, Samuel, they rejected me. Because they're saying they want to be like all the other nations out there. And yet, ironically, eventually they will get a king. But it's going to be God who is their king, reigning physically on the earth. Any other system is heresy, by the way. Post-millennial, the Jesus comes at the end and, and the church rules for a thousand years. That's nonsense. And then also amillennial. The amillennial system is also nonsense. That's saying that there is no thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. It kind of already happened in the past, and we're just kind of there, you know, and the, the thousand years doesn't really mean a thousand years and, you know, all the other stuff. Amillennial people are nuts. Verse 28, As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. All right. Speaking about fathers there, it's not talking about God the Father, it's talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They're beloved for that sake. Um, and if you know you preach the gospel, you will find out in an area where there's a lot of Jews, you'll find out very quickly that they're enemies. Um, verse 29, most of them. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past 
have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Speaking to Gentiles, we are the ones there in time past that we had not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, the Jews' unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through their, your mercy uh, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. You know, the Jews had to be punished for rejecting Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And they've gotten their punishment. Actually, their punishment's just about over. You say, huh? Yeah. 2,000 years of being cut off in terms of nationally, spirit of blindness there, cut off from the blessings and, and things like that. That's what the Bible teaches there. They're like a branches and things, and they're cut off. Yeah, but God's always willing to graft them back in again. If you don't understand what that means, let me just explain it to you, because I've studied forestry. Um, there are a lot of trees that you can actually cut a like a branch off and you can trim the bark and everything else and then you can trim the bark back on the host and you can put it down into there and you can put something around it and that branch that's been cut off from that tree will actually start to grow and the bark will heal around it and that branch will grow and it will be nice and strong and there are people it's plant propagation is what that's called and and there are people that get really good at this and they can actually taken a stump from an apple tree and they can graft in different branches and they can regrow an apple tree out of it and I, it's fascinating it's a, a very interesting science behind it actually, I actually have some books on it um, something I studied years ago and um, God can do that with the Jews God can take the Jew that says I'm in unbelief I don't believe Jesus is my Messiah but God I want truth I want to see through this whole thing of what is this Christianity thing all about and the Lord can reveal truth to that Jew, and that Jew can get saved today. They have not been cast away. All right? Um, 2,000 years of history, a lot of Jews have died. A lot of Jews went to hell in that time period because they rejected the solution. They rejected that finished sacrifice on the cross of Jesus Christ. And they lived all those years not being able to do anything about, what do I do with my sins? Where's the turtle dove for the sin offering? Where's the lamb to be slain? Where's this? Where's that? I can't live according to what the Bible teaches, the Old Testament there. Where's the Levitical priesthood? 2,000 years. That's a long time to say, God says, oh, you're in unbelief. Okay. And any Jew that wanted to get saved in the last 2,000 years, they've had a really rough time. A very rough time. I mean, look at Paul. They attempted to kill him so many times. You say, who? The, the evil Romans? Uh, no, actually, the Romans, even though they didn't like Paul all that much, a lot of them, some did, but uh, most of them didn't, weren't really too fond of Paul. They had to protect him sometimes because the Jews hated him that much. His own country. You know, own countrymen. And yet, you know the funny thing? Paul actually wrote at one point in time, and he said, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul would have been willing to go to hell and burn to see his brethren, the Jews, get saved. Hey, God, if you'll lift that blindness off the nation of Israel and they all get saved, I'll go to hell and burn forever. That was Paul's prayer. Now, why would Paul pray that if the Jews as a people were cast away? They're just done. God said, oh, no, I'm finished with them. doesn't make any sense. doesn't make a bit of sense. Be careful who you listen to, brethren. Um, it's been a great frustration of mine over the years because, and it's something that I can't stop. I, I realize that. There's always going to be false prophets out there, but I've seen this thing. So many young people, and they'll get caught up in these false ministries and false 
things and whatever else and they go off the deep end you say yeah but brother if they were real they wouldn't fall away well yeah but you have to watch that stuff acts chapter 20 paul was warning the brethren night and day with tears about false prophets um i have to do that that's part of my job description and um if somebody gets to a point where they can show you you can look at the scriptures and they are telling you that the words in front of your face don't really mean what they say um run away from them as quickly as you can okay um, expose them as a false prophet because that's what they are and get as far away from them as you can so that is going to be it um, just wanted to do this study here just to clarify what i believe again there are some things about the jewish people that have not come to pass yet some certain promises and things like that they've come back to their land in unbelief they're not all jews over there I didn't say that, okay, so stop lying about me. Um, they don't come back as believers. They come back and they have to have the revelation of Jesus Christ show to them signs and wonders, the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what goes on. God's going to separate the real from the false. And those Jews that are supposed to be there, that are appointed to go into the millennial kingdom, the Lord's going to watch over them. They're going to get saved, the whole thing. And he's going to make a new covenant with them at that point in time. It's going to be a miraculous thing. You say, well, then why don't everybody, why doesn't everybody get it? Well, very simple, because we can't. Nobody alive today can really understand the book of Revelation. It's a sealed book. Uh, well, that just kind of is there in Revelation chapter 5. You know, Jesus is the only one, the lamb that was slain. He's the only one worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof. It's just sort of speaking of that. But we can write commentaries and we can understand the book of Revelation completely, how it's going to happen and work out. No, you can't. No, you can't. And so, uh, who are the real Jews? Who are the ones that will get saved? Who are the ones that go into the new covenant and the millennial kingdom and all that? That's up to God to know. Our job as Bible-believing Christians, whether Jew or Gentile, our job is to preach the gospel and to preach the New Testament and to show the Jews, hey, you belong, you know, I'm of barbaric ancestry of that's the Bible word. I don't know what else to use. I mean, if it said Germania or something, I'd say, well, Germania, that's the right word, or Britannia. They would have been the first century terms, you know, for the lands up there, but the people were called, called barbarians. You know, um, I don't really fit in. I can't say, oh, yeah, boy, I remember when my ancestors, you know, were on the ark and things. I mean, Japheth, I guess, was technically, but I remember how God dealt with my ancestors down through the years. That book's not about my ancestry. This book is not about the Northern European people. It's not about the African people. It's about the Jews, the nation of Israel. And the Old Testament and the New Testament fit together. And a Jew that's in unbelief, but then says, okay, I'd like to get saved, they can come along and now they have belief and God will graft them in. He'll graft them in again. And they'll get the blessings of the Lord and forgiveness of sin and the peace that comes from that. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.